Bravo Apple, you did it. The iPhone SE is an amazing phone for a better price. And yet, it's not so good for the price and makes just enough sacrifices that the iPhone XR and 11 remain completely viable options and really aren't that much worse value. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I got a haircut. Can we talk about that? It's uh, it's it's a miracle. But anyways, yeah, today I'm not just talking about how great the iPhone SE is, although it is pretty great, but I also wanted to talk about how Apple masterfully pulled this off and made a phone that's a positive for literally everyone. So it's been a while since I've done a more casual video like this, but I do think it is worth doing. The iPhone SE just hit the mark of pretty much everything I wanted from it, with maybe one exception in the battery life. What I really want to talk about with the iPhone SE today is what I consider to be the three pillars of smartphone judgment. How good the phone is currently, how good the phone is overall for the buyer, and how good the phone is for the maker. An example of this is the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Is it currently a good phone? No. And it's outdated on iOS 12. How good was it? for the buyer. Pretty bad, unfortunately. There were numerous issues with bending and touch disease, among other things. Not to mention, the iPhone 6 really ended up not being any better than the 5S, just bigger. But how good was the iPhone 6 for Apple? Really, really spectacular. It's the best-selling smartphone of all time by a long shot, with over 220 million units shipped. Safe to say, I think Apple's pretty happy with that result, even if the majority of media about the iPhone 6 over the years has been very negative. And of course, this is when I'm judging a phone analytically. When we talk about what phone to buy, well, you really only focus on the first and second category. When you're buying a phone, you probably don't care what Apple thinks of you buying that phone. Using this template, we can properly judge the iPhone SE. So let's start with the first one. How good is this phone currently? Well, I'd say it's pretty terrific. It has Apple's A13 chipset and three gigs of RAM, putting it almost on par with the iPhone 11 Pro. It also has better hardware than the $200 more expensive iPhone X. Are. Does it have flaws? Absolutely. While I'd say this is a terrific smartphone, it might not look that way for some people. It's a small phone that features more or less the same design we've been seeing since 2014, and I get being tired of it. But this is a cost-cutting measure, for one thing, making this phone more desirable for budget users, and it's also the best phone for those not quite ready to move on from the home button yet. Those not too familiar with tech may not want to make the leap to the gesture-based system on the iPhone XR or 11, and that is understandable. But the iPhone SE might not not be for everyone, but that actually helps Apple, which I'll get to a bit later. But just as a phone right now, it is, for the most part, terrific, although it does lack in a couple areas. Battery life is a big one for me, a day's use is all you're getting out of it, and you're fortunate if you get that. The camera I didn't expect to be so impressed by, as it is the iPhone 8 sensor, but admittedly most photos, including portrait photos, have actually been quite good. The iPhone 11 camera outclasses it fairly easily, but even with a technically worse camera, the SC about matches and, in some cases, cases outperforms the iPhone XR. This picture here is actually a good example. In the XR's photo, while the green in the trees looks a little bit nicer, the sky is completely blown out, while the SC nails it perfectly, and I think that tone was a little bit more true to life as well. The A13 in it can really help produce a better photo, and so my only real complaint besides the size and design is just the battery life. And the size and design aren't complaints so much as they're just not really what I want out of a smartphone. The battery life is something I think everyone can complain about. All right, so we've determined how the iPhone SE stands currently. It's small and has a poor battery, but has a good camera and the specs of the $1,000 iPhone 11 Pro. I'd say the pros and cons balance each other out to make a pretty darn good phone, but that gets a lot better once you take the price into account. So now let's move to the second pillar of the smartphone judgment, how good the phone is for the user. This takes things into account like value, longevity, etc. Shocker, the iPhone SE scores really well in this category for me, considering you're literally getting $1,000 hardware for $400. You can yap about the camera and screen and battery all day, but when it comes down to it, you don't really spend most of your time thinking about those things. You're just using your phone, you're using iOS, and that software experience is more or less identical to what you'd get with the iPhone 11 Pro Max, albeit with the home button and smaller. These two phones are going to get the same number of years of software support, whether that's until 2024 or 2025 or whatever. The truth is, the iPhone SE will very likely be around just as long 
long as the 11 Pro Max, thanks to having the same heart with the A13. Same heart, same brain, it doesn't really matter. The important thing is that the iPhone SE is really good value, and actually probably the best value in the iPhone lineup at the moment. Of course, prices for you might not look like this, as carriers will often charge differently, but because there's so much variation, I'm just going to use the price straight from Apple to talk about the iPhone lineup. At the top, of course, you've got the iPhone 11 Pro starting at $999, then the 11 at $699, and the 10R at $599. And then at the bottom is the iPhone SE for $399 American dollars. For most budget buyers and value seekers, the SE is going to seem like the obvious choice, because it is if you don't do much with your phone. But if you want a bigger screen or a better battery, you can move up for a price. And that price will become even more relevant as we move into the third pillar. How good is this phone for the maker being Apple? Well, I wouldn't say they're hurting. From what I've seen, the media has been surprisingly positive about the iPhone SE, at least for the most part. It's nice to see that people realize while the SE is the old design and doesn't push the envelope in any way, it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be the barebone experience for a good price. But to be fair, part of the reason it's bare bones is naturally fueled by the desire for money. Get this, any of you watching right now who doesn't like this phone because you think it's boring, you don't like the display, you think the battery sucks, the camera, it's all bad, Apple needs to move on from this design. Well, congrats because uh, that's exactly what Apple wants you to think. Tim Cook is laughing right now. Apple doesn't want you to look at the iPhone SE and say, this, this is the phone for me. They want you to look at it and say, oh, this is kind of boring. I want something better. What's this? The iPhone XR is the next step and it looks way cooler. Okay, let's get that one. A lot of people are going to go straight up to that $600 or $700 phone because they think the SE won't be good enough. And it's fair to think that. But again, this is what Apple wants. They want you to buy the better phones over the cheaper ones. It's just basic economics. Also, without Apple releasing an iPhone SE Plus, they kind of just pulled a sneaky on everyone, so to speak. Before the SE, we had the 8 and 8 Plus at $450 and $550. Yes, the iPhone 8 was more expensive than the SE is now. I don't know why that was, but the 8 Plus for $550 wasn't a good deal and was just there as an in-between option between the iPhone 8 and 10R. Not everyone wants the small display, but they might still want the home button. So currently, without an SE Plus slotting in at $500, Apple forces people to go up to at least the $600 dollars option if you don't want that small SE. That means more money into their pockets and a better phone than yours. But the flip side of this is true. It probably will cannibalize some sales from the iPhone XR and 11. People will say, well, the iPhone SE has the same specs as the iPhone 11 Pro. I might as well just get that because it's way cheaper. However, I'd wager most who buy the SE likely would have bought the iPhone 8 instead if it had been an option. Most people buying the iPhone SE are those who appreciate the bare bones experience and don't need anything more. In other words, a lot of people who know nothing about phones except that they need one. Are iPhone SEs stealing Android sales? I did see an article assert this, and it is a good possibility. If you're a random Joe who knows nothing about phones and you walk into Best Buy and see three phones in your price range, two Androids and one iPhone. One of those Androids is a Samsung, which let's say you're coming from. You don't know what kind of Samsung you have, but it's slow and the battery life sucks and the camera isn't very good, so you don't really want another Samsung. The other phone is an LG. You know the brand, but you also know iPhones are popular. So what do you do? What most people likely do in that situation, choose the iPhone. Part of the reason Apple doesn't make ultra-budget phones like Samsung and a lot of other Android manufacturers is because they want to keep the premium nature of the brand. They want their devices to last, so the users will have a positive experience and eventually buy a new iPhone. Obviously, some iPhone users end up having lots of problems, don't get me wrong, but because Apple isn't selling super-duper cheap phones, the amount of users who don't like their iPhones is significantly smaller. A lot of the cheap phones being sold cut a lot of corners to get down to that price and usually won't get more than one or maybe two major software updates if you're lucky. I will say budget phones have overall gotten much better from where they used to be, but worse phones do raise a likelihood of a user not wanting to go back to the same manufacturer even if it isn't really directly, say, Samsung's fault. They didn't force you to cheap out and buy the worst phone they offered four years ago, but they did put that phone out there so justifiably in your head you might associate Samsung with a poor user experience. Pretty much any $400 Android phone, when it comes down to it, is not nearly as good as the iPhone SC. And the reason for that is because the iPhone SC is going to get that five years of software support. It's only $400. The corner it cut was nowhere except it has the older design. Also, kind of crappy battery life. But other than that, it's almost like the best iPhone out there. And so that's a really good deal. And I'm just very impressed with what Apple did here. This theoretically could result in some levers of Android coming over to Apple 
And at the end of the day, even if that doesn't happen, I can't see this phone being a negative for Apple in any way. But there it is, uh, the three pillars of how I judge smartphones. So let's recap. Is the phone currently good? Yep, it's fast and has a decent camera. While the design is older, it's still a phone a lot of people would love to have. Is the phone a positive for the user? Yeah, definitely. It's great value and will get software support for likely another five years or so. Is the phone a positive for Apple? Absolutely. I feel like the tech community usually looks for a negative spin to put on everything, and I really didn't want to do that in this video. The title isn't sarcastic. Bravo, Apple, you did it. You nailed the iPhone SE. I would have liked to see better battery life, but otherwise, this phone is exactly what I think people wanted, and it's going to sell well as a result. But what do you think of all this? Do you agree with me, disagree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, this video is all me just really talking. I'm not recommending you necessarily buy or don't buy this phone. If you're interested in potentially buying it, I do recommend you do some research into it, and I do have a review if you want to see it, so link in the description to that. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.